example that a decay series um, shows us the different types of decay that can happen to a radioisotope. So as a radioisotope decays, the daughter nucleus can be radioactive, not necessarily always, um, because when it's no longer radioactive, that's where we actually have the end of our um, decay series. So we're going to be looking at a sequence here for bismuth, and it's bismuth 212. So this is question 16 in your um, chapter 7 of your physics book. Have a go at it first. This is just going through the solution so you know what to do. So first thing is we need to look up what bismuth is in terms of its atomic number, which we can see here is 83. Now a lot of these elements around here, astatine and radon and all of these, they tend to be radioactive and terminate in lead because lead is very stable. And you can see here, for example, this is uranium. Um, uranium's decay chain terminates in lead as well. So bismuth is next to lead. It's number 83. So we're going to write down bismuth, it's BI, 83, oops, looks like a 1, I'm just going to fix that, 83 and it's 212. Okay, now bismuth has two possible decay modes. It can have alpha decay followed then by beta minus decay or you can have your 212 bismuth having the beta minus decay first and then the alpha decay. So the question is, um, will the two modes produce different final results and explain? So what we can do is we'll actually split this. Well, let's consider what happens in each of these cases. So in the first case, we've got our bismuth. We're going to have the alpha decay first. So remember alpha decay is a 4,2 helium atom coming off plus energy. Let's move that over. And what you then need to do is you need to figure out what is going to be added here at the front. And we know that 83 has to be what we add up to on this side, so this has to be 81. And we need 212 up the top here, so it has to be 218, plus 4 is 218, um, 208. So that's going to be 212. And then we need to look up what 81 is on our periodic table. So 81 is thallium, so um, TL. Oops. Like that. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do now after that alpha um, decay is we're going to look at, we've done that, we're going to look at the beta minus decay. So we're going to start with thallium, 81, 208. We're going to go beta minus decay. Remember beta minus decay is an electron plus a neutrino, and it's an antineutrino. And we need to know at the bottom here, something minus 1 has to be 81, and that's going to be 82. 82 take away 1 is 81, and the mass number is going to be 208 because we've got zero mass contributed by the electron. So again, if we look at our periodic table, number 82, ah, oh, it's lead. And that's because it's the stable oops, element. So we end up with our final product is lead. That's 208 lead if you want to be precise. So now we can do the other version here. If we have the um, decay happening the other way, this first mode happens 36% of the time, which means that this second mode happens 64% um, of the time. So I'm just going to change colour, do light blue. So Again, we start off with the 83, 212, bismuth, beta decay first, so your electron first, antineutrino, and we need the bottom to add up to 83, so this has to be 84, then 212. So with our periodic table, 84 is polonium, PO. And then the next decay that we have of our, remember this is the daughter, um, isotope is 21284 polonium. It's an alpha decay, so it's a 42 helium nucleus plus energy plus something here that makes the bottom 84. So this has to be 82. And we need to make the top 212. Something plus 4 is 212, that's 208. And we know that number 82 on the periodic table is lead. So in this situation, our final product is lead, and it's lead 208. So that means that in both situations, 
you actually do get the same product, which is cool. And that's shown here in this chain as well. So you can see with the uranium chain, if you start here at bismuth, thallium to lead, or if you start here at bismuth, we go to polonium to lead. So it doesn't matter which way you go, you start and end at the same places.